In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make player movement for a dungeon crawler style game. The movement will be grid based and created using tweens. I've also released a free plugin for Godot 3.5, which I'm going to use to create the level in this tutorial. Let's get to it. I'm going to start by showing you how to get the plugin. I'm going to try to get the plugin into the Godot asset library, but it might take a while. You can download it directly from GitHub in the meantime. The link is in the description. Copy the add-on folder from the zip file into your Godot projects folder. Remember to enable the plugin in the project settings. Note that you don't have to use the plugin to follow the tutorial. You can create the level using a grid map node for example. This is my first Godot plugin so it might not be as polished as something from more experienced developers. Let me know if you run into any problems, either in the comments or via issues on the GitHub page. The plugin adds a new node called Level Block, which is basically a cube with flipped faces. The node lets you use a single texture as an atlas that is divided by a texture size value. Each of the faces of the block can then display a different part of the texture using an index value. A negative index will make a face empty. Non-empty faces can also generate static colliders. Creating the level, I'm going to use this texture I made. The texture is also available for download from the GitHub repository. I'm creating two rooms connected by a corridor as our level. I'm using Omnian lights to give the room some light. While you can rotate level blocks, I recommend designing your levels without rotating them, so that the face directions remain consistent. The Omni lights can go near the torch textures on the wall for a bit of added realism. I'm adding a world environment to remove the default ambient lighting. And that's our level. Let's move on to creating the player. For the player, I'm going to start by creating a basic spatial node. Inside this node, I'm adding a camera for a first person view and giving it a wider field of view. I'm also going to create two raycast nodes to check for collisions, one facing forward and the other facing back. The raycasts should check two Godot units in their respective directions. We also want to make sure that we enable the raycasts, which are off by default. I'll also add a dim light to the player to compensate for the lack of ambient lighting. Let's save the player branch as a scene so we can reuse the player in other scenes. I'm going to add a script to the player. Inside the script, I'll get the reference to the front and back raycast nodes using onReady variables. I'm also going to create a new variable for our tween. We are going to use the new tweening features added in Godot 3.5. For this tutorial, we could just as well use the old tween node, but for future proofing our work, we should use the new system since the old tween node is removed in Godot 4. Next, I'm going to add in the physics process function. While our code doesn't do any physics-based movement, that should be done in physics process and not process. The raycasts only calculate collisions every physics frame. So let's match that by using physics process. I'm going to add an if condition that checks for input actions that I've already set up for our player. I'm also going to add a condition to the forward and back action that use the corresponding raycasts. I can use the isColliding method to check whether the raycast is colliding. If there is no collision, then the way is clear of obstacles and we can move in that direction. Now to create the tweens. I'm going to start with the forward action. I'm going to make the tween variable we set up earlier to a new scene tree tween using create tween. After creating the tween, I can make it tween the transform property of this node forward with the following line. Let's go over the parameters one by one. First, we have the target node of the tween, which is this node or self. Then we have the property that we want to animate, which is transform. The next parameter is the final value that the tween will animate to. With the old tween node, you would also need to define the starting value, but the new system just uses the current value for that. For the final value, I'm using the node's transform translated by vector 3 forward multiplied by 2 since we need to move forward two units to get to the center of the next level block. The last parameter is the time this tween will take to animate. 
I'm going to create a new constant value for that at the top of the script. We can copy this code for the back action, just changing the vector 3 forward to vector 3 back. For the left and right actions, we are going to tween the transform basis property instead. Use transform.basis.rotated for the final value. The rotated method takes an axis to rotate around, which for us is vector 3 up, and the angle to rotate by in radians, which is half pi, or 90 degrees. For the right action, we just make the pi rotation negative. The great thing about using transform here instead of just position and rotation values is that even if we rotate the player, the forward and back directions will match the player's rotation. Also note that unlike with the old tween node, you don't need to separately start the tweens, as they are started automatically. There's one more important thing that we need to fix. If we were to test the game now, you could move around, but every time you press an input action, a new tween just starts and we are quickly off the grid-based movement that we aimed for. To fix this, we need to disable the player's inputs while a tween is still running. A simple way of doing this is just adding a few if conditions at the start of the physics process. The first checks that we are dealing with our scene tree tween here, and the second checks whether a tween is still running. If so, we can just return the method here and skip executing the rest of it. Now our movement should work as expected. We can move forward and back, and turn left and right. We also can't go forward or backward if there is a wall in that direction. A few finishing touches that we can do is first adding easing to our tweens by using set trans and set ease on our create tween calls. This makes our movement animations a bit more interesting. We can also add some head bobbing with an animation player, animate the position of the camera node, and make the animation the length of the tween. We can then play it alongside the forward and back tweens. That's it for this tutorial. I'm planning on creating follow-up tutorials at some point, showing more features that you can add to this dungeon crawler game. I hope you found this tutorial and the level block plugin helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to support us in making more content like this, and thank you for watching.